So there it is, we have our first quadratic complexity algorithm and that's already plenty for this second session in complexity of algorithms but we are going to go a little bit deeper I'm going to consider whether or not this algorithm that I have implemented sorry, here for counting the repetitions on a list is optimal or not and I'm going to go deeper in the sense that I'm also try going to try to define what being optimal means. Optimal brings to mind the idea of is this the best that we can do? Okay, Is this algorithm really all there is? Is this the best that I can do to compute how many times each element in a list happens or not? Or is there something smarter that I could be doing that would be faster also faster in terms of this computational complexity of algorithms that I'm considering now? Well, I'm not going to conclusively answer this question now, well, not till the very end, but I'm going to give a pretty good approximation. Let's make a second function that solves, importantly, the same problem. So here I'm making a strong and a very important distinction. I have the problem of computing how many times every element in a list occurs, how many times it happens of counting repetitions, and what I had before was an algorithm to solve this problem. Visit all the elements in the list and for each of them just go over all the list and count how many times it happens. That's a way to solve my problem, an algorithm that solves my problem. But the two things are different. I might consider other algorithms, other strategies to solve my problem. Remember that an algorithm is just a succession of steps that I use to solve one particular problem. One problem has many, many different ways that it can be solved. It has many algorithms that solve it. So I'm going to consider another one here and I'm going to call it count repetitions smarter. What am I going to do here? Well, I'm going to uh, have a list here again, as I also had before. But because I only want to know how many times every element happens, I don't much care about how they are sorted, how they appear in the list. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to sort my list. I'm going to take this very important step. So first, I'm going to sort my list. And once I have done that, then what remains is the problem of counting how many times every element appears in a sorted list. So, and I'm going to leave that to you, I'm going to have a, an algorithm that counts how many times an element appears when the list is sorted. Okay, and we'll be going to it in a second. And then just uh, takes care of not uh, running over the list too much when I have elements that might be repeated. I will leave the details to you, but the important thing is that first I sort the list and then I consider this count how many sorted function and then do something else that's a little bit clever. And what does this count how many sorted function do? Is it just the, like the one that we had before that traverses all the lists and counts how many times one particular element happens? Well, not really, because now I know that uh, my list is sorted, okay? So what I do is that I start at one particular element, okay? And just traverse the elements that are just the same as it is. I loop over all the elements in the list that are just the same as I am. I start at zero. I suppose I'm just equal to myself, so at least I will enter here once. And then I just loop the elements that are adjacent to me, that are next to me, as long as they are equal to me. Because I know my list is sorted, because that what I did first of all, I sorted my list, all the elements that have the same value as I have are going to be next to me, are going to be in succession in the list. Okay, so 
I'm going to take advantage of this and I'm not going to need to traverse the whole list, just a part of it. Okay? And I will not stop to consider the cost of the algorithms here, because, for example, I have this um, inconvenient list, uh, sorry, call to the sort function, which is something that we will be seeing a lot about later. And also, this is a little bit trickier, but I encourage you to, to give it a, a go and to give it a look. Ignore this part for the moment, but try to see how many times this runs. Okay, and basically you will see that I only visit every element once, so all of it is, uh, all of this part is linear. So I'm probably going to be doing better than before where I had that quadratic cost. I'm going to give an intuition here by plotting the times. I said a while back that plotting the time is not uh, always super reliable, but sometimes it helps, and this is one of these examples. When I plot the first way of doing things, we already saw that this presents a quadratic tendency. And now I'm plotting the second way of doing things, which has, let's say, a fairly complicated shape until I realize that these differences are very small. And when I plot them together, I see that the second way of computing them, sorting first the list and being careful, is much faster than the second way of doing it. So, this gives me a very strong intuition that the quadratic way of counting repetitions in an algorithm, in a list, is not an optimal algorithm. I have seen two algorithms, two strategies to solve the same problem, and one appears to be much faster than the other. So at least this one is probably not the best that I can do. And I'm going to define what it means for an algorithm to be optimal using this idea. We have been seeing quite a lot about algorithm complexity, and we follow this trace of execution and try to figure out how many times the whole thing is going to run and call that and assign that to one of the complexity classes that we have seen so far, constant, linear, and quadratic, and we will see more during this course. But now I want to define the problem complexity. And I'm going to do that just following the reasoning that I have been doing. I have been seeing that I have one problem counting repetitions in list, and I have at least two different algorithms to solve it. And one of them seems to have higher complexity than the other. I haven't said the complexity of this one, but let me tell you it's lower than n squared. Okay, I'm going to define the complexity of a problem, not of an algorithm, as the complexity of the lowest complexity algorithm that can be used to solve the problem. Okay, let's consider any problem. I can solve it in many ways. Some of them will be better, some of them will be worse. The complexity of the problem is going to be the algorithmic complexity of the fastest algorithm that solves the problem, of the lowest complexity algorithm that solves the problem. That is going to be my definition. And an algorithm is going to be optimal for one problem if it's that one, if that has the lowest possible complexity to solve the problem. Algorithm complexity computed using this following the trace of execution thing. Problem complexity is the best complexity among all the algorithms that solve the problem. And all of the algorithms that, has that, that have that best complexity are considered optimal. 